Mega level. level. Omega level. Omega level. Omega level. No other being has ever had the might, nay, the nobility. Hey, how's it going? It's your boy, Jersh Manhunter. Make sure you check out our social medias, Instagram, Omega underscore level underscore podcast, and at Facebook, Omega Level Podcast. Anywhere you can listen to podcasts, you can find us at Omega Level Podcast. Man, that's a lot of podcasts, but here we go. Anchor, iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, sure, that's a thing, and all of the other ones. Thanks for listening. Welcome to Omega Level Easy Listening with your host, Jewoosh Ben Kruft, and my co-host, Stevan Moreau. How are you, Stevan? I'm all right. This is not ASMR. This is easy listening. Okay. Now we are going to play fake jazz. All right, all right, all right, all right. Now, Joshy. You know, see, that's something that I appreciate La La Land is to the resurgence of jazz. You know what I mean? Like, it was <laughs> them that brought jazz to the forefront, and I appreciate them. Yeah, I appreciate the fact that they showed that it was always created by white people. Yeah, yeah, that was very... Okay, we're going to take that back. We're going to go ahead and reset. Uh, Steven didn't mean that. I was joking. I've not uh, seen the movie. Welcome to Omega Level Podcast. Haven't been on here in a while. Just missed the table. <laughs> Thank God this isn't a... Uh, there's no video for this anymore because that was embarrassing. Steven, how are you, man? Tired. Uh, you're tired, <laughs> tired. Nice that you said that. Matt told me before we, uh, this morning when we went to go see uh, the wonderful movie Joker, which we will be talking about on this podcast right here. Nowhere else. Nowhere it's else. The only no only discussion one's, yep, of Joker. <laughs> no one's even talking about it in America like or across the world. Like We're the only people that have seen this movie and we're f- so ecstatic to talk about it. Uh, but last night, uh, Matt made a joke about you... Uh, Saying like, "Hey, we should have like a segment uh, dedicated to Stephen saying he's tired." And then the first thing you said to Matt, he said he smiled when you said it. You're like, "Yeah, I didn't sleep that well." He said he started smiling. I was like, "God dang, that's great." I usually don't <laughs> sleep that well, but it's even worse now that you know, waking up, taking care of a baby, and taking a girlfriend to work at like the ass crack of dawn. <laughs> Man, that's great. Uh, so now, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, segue into our 10 minute power hour of Stephen is tired. Uh, Stephen, any thoughts? <laughs> There we go. All right. I'm awake. I didn't right. really get much sleep. You didn't get much sleep? <laughs> nice. Ah, there we go. Uh, but this week, we're going to discuss Joaquin Phoenix's The Joker, directed by Todd Phillips. Uh, I'm a fan of some of his movies. He's never done a you know master class movie. Uh, and I wouldn't say The Joker is, but it's definitely very artistic and very like, wow. You know, it's a very clever movie. Uh, and the other, the comics that we will be dealing with are Silver Surfer Black Issue 4. Oh, an amazing, amazing issue to an amazing series so far. And a live reading of King Thor. And a live <laughs> reading of King Thor by Jason Aaron, which is like the last thing that Jason Aaron's going to give us. He's been writing... It's Thor-related. Yeah, Thor-related. He's been writing Thor for seven years now. And it's so. the return of... A, uh, sorry if I mispronounced his name. Asad Rebic. Uh, what did As he write? The, he was the one he before? He did the first art for the first Jason Aaron run on like the God of Thunder, That's God dope. Butcher arc. And then he's doing the art on this, yes. King Thor? That's these, what's up. these last four issues... <laughs> Last four issues? Yeah, I think it's only four, which is just like, God dang, man. So it's only going to be five issues in total? Or it's, oh, four. it's four, including <laughs> yeah. the one yes. that we've already read? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, I was like, well, that man, means it has what to be a pretty short epic conclusion. Then. I mean, it's already off to a damn good bang. Well, we say literally. that, but then they, yeah, well, we say that, but then they have a segment that they're focusing too much on the god, the granddaughters. Like, I'm cool trying to meet that the family. I mean, they stuff. already got something important, and then, like, you know, boom tubed away or whatever. I so mean, I guess, yeah. They might not be in the uh, next issue or two, and they might just, you know, show up at the very ending to give Thor give whatever their grandfather info he needs what to he fucking needs. defeat the All Black or whatever. Yeah. But see, that knowing that it's only four issues, like, you kind of, you know, I mean, it's got to I mean, be they very were a big impactful. Part, I mean, they've always been a big part of, like, uh, future Thor's, like, stories. Like, they were there when he was fighting Galactus. Yeah. That's big. Galactus is always big, but man, I mean, Loki. In Old this. Galactus. Uh, reading like liver <laughs> spots and stuff. <laughs> liver spots. No, he did. I I mean, he looked I mean, like an old, decrepit Galactus. <laughs> so it was his normal form, the human form that we see in like Silver Surfer Black? Or was it the no, typical No, it was Galactus? like actually Galactus, but like old as shit, because okay. it's at the end of time. Okay. He's like, if I can finally eat Earth, and it's all just dusty and stuff, it's not going to be delicious, but I finally eat it. And Thor's like, fuck you, I'm still defending this dead-ass planet. <laughs> How does Galactus age when he was like born of another universe? I don't know, man. Hmm. Everybody, I mean, everything comes to an end. I, I mean, I guess, some things. I mean, yeah. I not mean, Noel. Ask, <laughs> ask, ask previous Galactus. <laughs> ask, previous ask, Gal- ask Galen. <laughs> Yeah, but he became something better than himself. Yeah, but he was still at the end of everything. The devourer of the The one world. survivor of the previous universe. Universe like, uh, do they have a number for this? 
No, not I'm, just not 16 that I'm aware, or whatever. Yeah, I'm saying. Saying. I think it's like the 13th one or something. Not that I've kept up with. It's it's hard to keep up I with. I thought they main said it in the all I the Marvel Universe. <laughs> That's all I say. Are we on the main timeline? Cool. <laughs> we there. We there. Uh, but overall, I mean, King Thor, I'm having a blast. I mean, it's one issue in. It's nice reading Thor again. Uh, big spoilers, clearly, if you've listened okay. to us, if you're don't a first-time at, listener. Don't look at issue three's cover. <laughs> yep, don't, listen, don't look at issue three cover, but we will say why we won't look at uh, issue three's cover, is that they bring back big bad gore. On the last page. Last page, yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't, confused on how he's alive. It's been a while since, I, it's been, you know, seven years since I read the God Butcher story. It's but, been uh, seven years? Yeah. Hot damn, no way that was that long ago. Yeah. That was what started his run? Mm-hmm. Damn, he was, wow. Fuck that's when man. I started reading comics. Yeah, Jesus, that's, wow, that's a lot of Thor. Um, I've skipped pretty much everything in between. Mm-hmm, <laughs> so, mm-hmm. thankfully it doesn't seem like you really need to know everything, uh, Beyond that, to uh, get this story, uh, no, it was relatively easy. If you know Thor, if you know Loki, Loki, they're at the end of time. They're fighting it off. Uh, Loki has the the all black, the uh, necro sword, uh, which is Null sword. Fucking awesome. And then it was Gore's, and then it was Thor's, and then it was Galactus's, and then and it then was Eon's. Or sorry, Ego. Why do you keep saying Eon? I don't know. You didn't they even... both got three letters. I mean, but they're <laughs> not even the same letters. I mean, there's one letter. Oh. There is an two. O. There's an E and an O. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, no, Eon is an I O N. Oh, is it? Pretty sure. I don't know. I, mean, I, I could be wrong, E-O-N. but I think it was spelled like that. Could be Ion. <laughs> well, Whatever. I might be. I might be pronouncing it wrong, or reading it wrong. I mean, the writing was for this was already off to a good start though, because we're talking about the whatever library of knowledge, infinite knowledge. Based the on Asgard how like of all knowing. Library molded of all knowing. from the first like fires that sparked the first sun. It's like, wow, this is important. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, the halls of unknowing are a joke. Are they? Yeah, because like I was saying, I've read, I'm reading that solo Loki issue, and they bring up the. Was it not the same place? No, they went there, and then the uh, children of eternity now and then uh, said, "This is just this is nothing compared to what we have." And then they bring them to I don't remember the exact name, but it was every book ever written about any hero. Like they had the Spider Man bookcase. It had all of his tales and tales to come. That's what this seemed Logan's to be too, because there's this that is one last book though. being written. This is everyone. Asgard's keeps up with pretty much oh, all, I mean, yeah. you know, most as much as they can, but this one even brings up the gods. Like this one is talking about people that are dead and to come, creations that are to come. Uh, which is even bigger. I'm like, geez, this is awesome. And that's what makes it hard reading <laughs> Loki. I mean, you know he's always a bad guy, but he has his moments. You're like, oh, I like Loki. He's fun. He's, you know, he's, it's always a, he's a for trickster. his own purpose, though. Yes, he's always for his own purpose. I mean, I've even liked him in, in you know Infinity War, that Infinity War series that we read. Man, it was you know, it's like yeah, he's bad. It seemed like he was gonna do the right thing, but or do the wrong thing. But he, in the end, he did the right thing. But was it because he saw himself I'm fighting his sure, brother yes. at the end of time, <laughs> fucking killing him? You yeah, know, I'm certain. Like it had to have been. It had to be. He's like, oh, okay, I want to get what I want. Oh, last two standing. What's up? Well, last why, three. Like, I don't know why he wants to kill everything. Yeah, he was born in darkness, dude. He was I, abandoned. Also, even God. even Thor said Freya's last words were like, "I fucking but never f- loved you." God. Like Jesus. When they first start fighting, okay, before they get to the fight though, the halls of all knowing or what the hell ever. Mm-hmm. I saw it was funny because like they're looking around and someone's like, "I can tell you," and then they like get spooked by him. I thought that was immediately Gore right there because he just looks so similar. Uh, he does. Yeah. No. Yeah, when I think they showed they might be the same. Well, I don't know. I don't think Gore has four eyes. Uh, the face was the same. The body tape type was slender, just like that. Stuff. They had the tendrils. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I was like, man, they're really... He's like, I'm the god of... I forget. But they <laughs> used him, so, I mean, I don't know. You've read the one where he had the... I didn't finish the God Butcher. Yeah. But you said you had him make the bomb, the god of all... The bomb yeah, of all he, bombs. At first, he remember, He doesn't remember what he is, like, the god of... He said, I guess, it's the god of forgetting. Um, But, yeah... Like, instead of a Moab, it's a Goab? He's about to start telling them something, and then, like, these necro crows... Crews, crews show up and like uh, start causing havoc because he's mi- he's about to mention that Loki now has the uh, all black and then yeah obviously they said he's here his crow show up and start causing chaos and they're trying to fight them and uh, skipping forward a little bit because it uh, cuts to Thor fighting Loki and then it cuts back to this she's like I have a piece of the Bifrost so I can teleport wherever because they get the little book that they need I guess mm-hmm. to help Thor. And he's like, I remember what I am. I'm the god of bombs. Because he opens up a book and is just hollowed out and just full of bombs. <laughs> just full of bombs. <laughs> it's like, oh, man, so great time to remember. He sacrifices himself, blows up the last library, and we'll see where they go from there. Hopefully they show up in, like, the last issue or whatever to help Thor out. But Thor sensed what happened, too. Uh, he's like, oh, God, the, the library's gone. 
Because he's just connected to everything. See, I'm really hoping this has a connection to Loki's solo series, too, because in the first issue of Loki, they had a, a Thor from the future coming back to try and find Loki. But he actually went to Thor's room, so Thor thought he was playing a trick on him. He's like, wrong room, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And he's like trying to warn him. So Thor is going to be the downfall of something. At least in the Loki series, that's what it's seeming. It's the old man Thor. It's all Father Thor. It's the same one, missing an eye. And I was like, oh, shit. Well, and he's like, oh, you, you messed up. You, you have an extra eye. <laughs> it's like, dude, well, you don't, you're not blind in the future for some reason. Why doesn't, what is that? I don't remember that. No, well, in, the, in the one we're reading, he, does, he has both eyes, does he not? King Thor? No, I think he has an eye patch. He is wearing an yeah, eye patch? I think okay. so. Okay. Uh, God, he, he did something incredibly gangster besides the napalm planet. But uh, yeah, he's talking about, Loki's talking about, uh, he's like, you imprisoned me by escape. I ate, you put me in a pit of uh, Muspelheim vipers, but I ate my way through them until my insides were like on fire and I was crying like venom or whatever. I was like, Jesus. He also like apparently destroyed an entire planet. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, I want to see I mean, see where that. they were fighting, there was no life. Well, I think they were first fighting on Asgard, and then like but Loki it was dead just Asgard. tackles. Yeah, of course, everything's dead. There's like, well, no, it's it couldn't have been because the hall of the, the unknowing. Left. The hall of the all knowing is the uh, is was the last of Asgard. Because oh. remember when that blew up, Thor felt that, oh, and then course. Loki's like, ah, you see that Asgard is gone. He's like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> <He> <laughs> tackles fuck you, get the planet and Gors or Thor said he's been to every planet that has life. He's connected to everything. Like we're. The last little bits of life are teeming, and he knows that this little planet that he just got tackled to from thousands of well, they ended up the landing on fucking away. Midgard. Yeah, that was dope. Yeah, that was restarted cool. time. At the end. Yeah, but he throws his hammer. He's like, seek out the last one of the last remaining stars, and Loki's like, you think fire's gonna like do anything to me? And you he's think like, anyone's gonna come to your aid? He's like, he's on a dying planet with like this ac acidic pus. He's like. It's napalm. He said, no, but this will probably hurt you. And just blows up this entire planet to try and, like, this it doesn't even really phase the Loki that much. Yeah. And now, finally, after all this time, Thor realizes, maybe I should kill Loki. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. They've had thousands of fights. He's always went easy on <laughs> and him. And they even mentioned that Thor was the first god. Well, he's, like, the oldest god. He's the oldest god. Yeah. Because all the A other... God before all other gods. All the others are dead. I'm pretty sure that they said that he's like was the first god, which is just funny because we keep getting like can't he's be, the first. Because Odin, Odin is like his dad. Yeah, you would think. Yeah, you would fucking think because we talked we talked about how Odin fucked uh, Mother Nature, <laughs> Gaia. <laughs> yeah, Loki tries to claim that he was the reason that Odin died. Always mm -hmm. sneaking into his bedroom while he was telling sleeping and just telling him god. all the things that he's done. That's dirty. No, that he's not even told anybody. That's and dirty. He apparently just choked on his tears or whatever because he knew he should have smothered him in his crib. And Thor's like, lies. Deception. <laughs> I killed him. I was about to say, <laughs> I buried his body. <laughs> oh, God, I thought, I thought that was awesome. He's like, Basically, I killed him. Yeah. I burned his body on a pyre the size of Jodenheim. Because it was Jodenheim. <laughs> <laughs> that was gangster shit, dude, yes. Because it was Jodenheim. And then mentions that hard-ass shit about Freya not loving him, and he's like, I think I'm starting not to as well. Like, <laughs> fucking finally, Loki, or Thor, you keep trying to find some sort of glimmer of light. He says that, too. Mm -hmm. Like, I just keep trying to think that there is something in you. It's like, no, dude, he was... You weren't wanted from birth, and Loki's just kept that. Even though he's been accepted he's into... He's always the, had this darkness. Exactly. Even though he's been accepted into the graces of the gods, he still felt like an outsider. Yeah. Because he is, you know? He was. Birthright, he was. But he was still treated as a prince. He was still treated as the king of Jotunheim right now. You know what I mean? I in, pres in present time, he's Loki. the king of Jotunheim. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In the present. Yeah. yeah. I thought it was funny or kind of dark that Loki's just like, I'll kill you, and then I'll just forget that you ever even existed because I'll exist in just nothingness live, for so long. I was going to say, I'll live like, so Why? long. That's so lonely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what about that? It seems I'm assuming that deals with the, the corruption of the darkness that is in him. Maybe. Because he even said, uh, who's the last person he fought with the Necro? Who? Thor. Because he mentioned the other one wasn't as bad. Well, in because the Loki's future, pure dark. Uh, he fought Galactus with the Necro Blade. But he mentioned uh, a name. Was it Galactus then? Because he said it wasn't as evil as what Loki is right now. Oh, I don't, I don't remember that. You don't remember that? No. Yeah, he was saying something like he's like it wasn't. It might have been Loki saying that. He's like he wasn't. See, that's the difference. He was just merely adopting the darkness, kind of like a Bane situation. Mm -hmm. It's like I have literally lived darkness my entire life. Yeah. I was like, fuck, dude. Loki looked amazing as an all black too. I thought it. I don't know. You it didn't looks like a that? Little weird to me. Really? I thought yeah. it accentuated his horns, and then yeah. the whole like going down the arm and stuff like that. I thought the blade and stuff looked dope. You didn't like that? I think that was a little campy. Still had a little green on him too. Really? I see. He still looks butt naked. 
Yeah, I mean, so the Silver Surfer, but we're not complaining is. about him, are we? No, but he's like he's he's covered <laughs> he's in cosmic. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he he created a spear bomb in issue four. <laughs> it's okay to be nude when you when you got a little bulge. I know Gore's nude too all the time though. Yep. And see, that was a crazy thing too is that introduction of Gore. You have Loki, what seemingly is going to kill Thor in this issue on Midgard. Yeah, on <laughs> Midgard, and he's like, and then well, first he says he's going to kill your people. He's like, I'm glad I get to do it again. Yep. Like the ones you love, something about these fucking Midgard people, man. Damn, Nat- Natty P does it to us all. <laughs> uh, but then he's going to kill them, and he's going to kill you, and while he's in the middle of his sentence, <laughs> stabbed right through the chest. Yeah. And from the text, I was kind of thinking, no. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit. But then remembering the few texts that I've seen of him in the Venom, him in Silver, and him in... Uh... Oh, God, what's the other one? It's all small one. You said Venom and... Venom... Silver Surfer? Silver Surfer. Maybe, maybe it was <laughs> only two times. Well, he was in two issues of Bl- Silver Surfer, so that's probably what it was. Uh, it's always a black box with red text. Yeah, red. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, but it's drawn the same. And I, I mean, they do that with villains for the most Joker's part. Joker's anyway. always written with squiggly letters yeah, as well. Exactly. Shows you psychotic. Someone uh, that's just truly ca- crazy. Karen from Martian Manhunter. His is also written oh, squigglies. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <The> one, <laughs> I'm the one that man. called him Karen, and I was like, who? <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were on the same page yeah. with Karen, man. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but overall, my thoughts on King Thor, dope, excited. I'm more excited to see how Jason Aaron but, ends this. I mean, yeah. clearly Thor has to win, right? I mean, the ending of that the was like uh, reminiscent of when um, Gore first got the Necro Sword because these two gods like crash landed on his face when he got excommunicated from his people because he said some blasphemy and he's like, the gods don't care for us and he's got pegged with a stone. He's like, you gotta leave, dude. I know that we're all starving and like dying of thirst. Mm-hmm. You gotta leave. You don't talk about gods like that. He's just out in the desert and. Um, I think they were also brothers. You got to leave. That crash landed, and they were dying, and they asked for help, and he's like, why would I help you guys when you've never helped us? And I guess he delivers the final blow, and that's when he first got the Necro Sword. Mm. So it's kind of reminiscent of that. I thought that was pretty awesome. He says, maybe at the end of time, like, these brothers are bickering when everything is dying around them. This I is why I despise you guys. I, was say, I just think Noel and the, the, the darkness itself is uh, has a bad time when it comes to Asgards, uh, or Asgardians, because like, even in Venom, they showed him fight someone in Asgard. They didn't name him. I thought it was Thor. Thor did fight him. That was the lightning incapacitated him in one of the issues of Venom. Uh, but he fought, also fought a Asgard to, or an Asgardian to the death. Like, stand still. They stabbed each other, but of course, Null survived. Uh, but I was like, man, this, this apparently something with the darkness, man. Asgardians, they get, they get riled up, get that <laughs> light going, man. I mean, yeah, they are bringers of life. Exactly. Sometimes, so but, it um, makes sense. And they're gods. It was so. pretty cool that we actually see Thor like, use a bit of the Odin force. A bit. Yeah, a just bit. a bit of it. Just to buy time for uh, Mjolnir to come I back. I still think he's, hold, he's holding back until this very end of this issue, before, but he was bested. And he was pro- saying that. He's he ke- threw him into his son, which as soon as he did, I was like, why the hell do you think one son is going to do anything to wasn't. all black? He, he, he said he hoped, but he, uh, he kind of knew that he one hoped. son wouldn't be enough. Yeah, <laughs> he said, exactly. Well, it's like it's Loki with and, the fucking all black. It seems oh, like man. sons are few and far between now. <laughs> 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 Got to find him when you can. Got to find him when you can. We have overall damn really good start to this yep. series. Uh, very, and I say this in a good way. Very crude art too. It's very grounded. It's not too much. Yeah, you know that's what why I'm saying? I really it, it like feels the fresh. Sods. Yep. It re- I like the art. coloring. Uh, I like the drawing. It's it really a pretty action packed issue. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, before we go into Opposite our next of uh, Silver Surfer Black. Oh my God, this guy. <laughs> I mean, in a way, yeah. I mean, you look at Silver Surfer Black. It's very. I think it's very eye appealing. Oh, but it could dude, also, yeah. But, but it could this also is also be like off. a super quick read. Uh, you think so? I yeah. thought issue three was a little bit. I feel like the though. dialogue was like kind of sparse in this issue a little bit. Not too bad though. Yeah, it was right to the point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I got one more issue for that. Man, I know, and it's gonna be sad. The only thing I was confused yeah, about probably. is uh, the face in one of it. Was that his wife? Yeah, yeah. It okay. was a flashback. I think to okay, issue two or three. Immediately, the Watcher, which is cool that that showed up in Uatu. Yeah, Uatu. If, if, if you, that's how you say it. I mean, U A T U. That's the yeah. name. Doesn't seem like there's much to pronounce. Yeah, <laughs> not no, but uh, they never intervene. But he had to intervene in this because at the beginner, Benny, blah, 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 <laughs> at the beginning of this issue, you have Galactus. Uh, well, the mother box or whatever the create the incubation chamber. Yes, that Galactus has been born into is found inside of Ego from the last issue, mm-hmm. and that's where it's causing uh, him pain. It's apparently. causing him pain exactly. <laughs> and at the end of that issue, and at the beginning of this one, Silver Surfer helped Ego out. Was able to like stop the pain and like I guess stop the incubation. Yeah, he got the incubation box out of ego. Yep, and he was about to throw it away. And he's about to throw it away he's and like, like I gotta kill, kill my creator. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It make it only makes sense to kill Galactus. Eh. I mean, I know. I mean, 
the watcher comes in and tells us why. Like, yeah, because yeah. even yeah, even Gallon when he yeah, because he speaks to Gallon inside mm-hmm. of the incubation box. I thought that was really cool. Which when he's dope. reaching out to him because yes. it says his infant like uh, f- like his fetus like state is changing uh, shapes just to try and scare him away. Mm-hmm. It's funny that he's like a scared little frightened child. Because he said he sees uh, surfers like a serpent or something. It's funny you see like both of them kind of shape shifting. Like he's a serpent, and you see, him, I guess him trying to create like a hawk to scare him away, and then he turns into dolphins, and he turns into like, I don't know, like a fucking shark or something. I don't think. Uh, well, regardless, he's like changing yeah, shapes. They're kind of having serpent, like a little uh, battle of the minds. Galactus was a deer, so he went to a fox. Oh, it was a squid. It was like a kraken, I guess, when he was dolphins. When he was dolphin. Oh, yep, yep. Dolphin like was a, a kraken. Wolf and like a. Deer or something. Wolf and a deer, or maybe an elk. Yeah, I can't tell. It's a very weird elk. Uh, but either way, I mean, the panel right, but picture right before it is a humongous is splash a humongous page. Humongous <laughs> splash page it's with double Galactus, because this is when he's touching it. He can feel him. He's uh, what does he say? If I could reach his mind, the powers, perhaps I could. What is? And then boom, cuts into him feeling all this pain. He's never felt so much anger. And this is a ch- this is not even a born Galactus, and he already has these feelings. And we get this amazing splash page with a at least. 50 story tall Galactus minimum. Looks like a sea of blood. Looks like a sea of blood with uh, just encompassing the sur- Silver Surfer's board, which is just so, so fucking awesome. I mean, that is just a cool page. Mm-hmm. And then he just says, He is he there. I'm like, oh my God, dude. Gangster. <sighs> and Cos- he's been injured this whole time. The black has taken over him. Yeah, but he was still carrying the incubator out. Which I know. Is cool. It looks like he's got his like, whole cosmic thing like warping through it mm-hmm. or something. I don't know if that's how that was supposed to be interpreted, but that's how it looked. It's, the it's box good, is weird looking anyway. Yeah, I mean, the best thing I could do is uh, if you've read any of the Justice League Odysseys, it looks like a mother box. It looks exactly extent, like what yeah. they're doing, but a little more... Uh, intricate. Intricate, yes. I guess it has more like pipes. More pipes. More, yep, yeah, exactly. Okay. We're on the We're same page the same thing, yeah. <laughs> exactly. A little bit more uh, pipes, different... Uh, I guess uh, wires hanging from it because yeah. when he was tr- about to throw it into the sun or the Helios, I think it was a dying sun or something. It was like, like that. a white dwarf, like white dwarf. It couldn't get much hotter. <laughs> Which is what they made Mjolnir with, was it not? No. Yeah, well, a dying, a dying dwarf star. Yeah. Right? So they condensed all of that into Mjolnir. Woo! That's, That's gangster. why it packs one hell of a punch. <laughs> uh, but you have the All Black taking over Silver Surfer, so he's been weak from the jump, and he's still doing all of these amazing things. He wants to kill him. I thought it was cool when uh, Uatu showed up and was talking about his past, his, his lives that he's lived. He's like, no matter what you do, if you kill Galactus, you'll still live with everything that you've done. It changes nothing. Mm-hmm. Like, nothing changes for you. Like, you've lived your life. There's an end where you but he was you still die by to Thanos save, like, wielding Mjolnir. He's trying to save, like, an insane amount of planets, though. Yes, exactly. He's like, I don't care if I suffer. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, saving, I'm saving a lot of planets. But... Gallon himself said, like, he sensed that the universe is forging him for, like, a greater purpose. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, yeah, it is. He's, like, a balancer, but he is a bringer of death. I thought it was awesome, though, that he says, like, as he's getting closer to being born, he feels hungry. Mm-hmm. That's all he ever feels is hungry. I know. He just loves to <laughs> he's devour. He's just a like glutton. <laughs> no, man, Mr. The Devourer over here. Yeah. It's funny that he's supposed to bring balance, but he's never allowed to eat Earth. <laughs> 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 Midgard, dude, it's too important. It's too important. Yeah, it's got t- all the superheroes. Woo. <laughs> and Thor's got the hots for it. I don't know. Yeah, even when it was he can, dying. He can go there and drink some of the best mead, even though as- he always says Asgard's that mead is better. Be. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He always says Asgard's mead is better, so I don't know why he goes there. He gets he gets some twang, and he never can't get off of it. Like, some twang. <laughs> you're, an As- you're an Asgardian that's lived for thousands of years, dude. Yeah. He's what the hell? mentioned in the future that he's forgotten pretty much all the Avengers. Yeah, well, that's pretty. You exist how far? For, uh, how far is that though? It's at the end, end of, of everything. Time. Yeah, yeah, it's at the end of everything. <laughs> I mean, Silver Surfer, like in mentioned in this issue, was lives goes dies by Thanos at the end of time yeah. while wielding Mjolnir, which is dope to know that Silver Surfer is worthy of carrying Mjolnir. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Pretty good point. That's pretty fucking awesome. But his head gets mounted on it. Yeah, <laughs> Silver Surfer. I mean, Thanos got to a broke ass point. That was during the Thanos wins comic, was it not? Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Thanos is always just broken though. Yeah. There was at one point that he was I also connected to literally everything. In what? Uh, I don't remember exactly what. Mm. I, saw, I saw that on Reddit recently. Someone posted a picture of that. Like, he was connected to everything. Like, like his birth, the end of everything. Just literally everything. And someone's just like, yeah, whoever writes this dude usually just has a hard-on for him. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the Thanos wins was Donny Kate, so I mean. But even though when Thanos wins, they say that he still can't beat uh, Noel because Noel's is super fucking broken. I, mean, oh, I literally dude. don't think he's capable of dying. Which I don't is know just how. Like, no, yeah. What do you do? Why? I'm just saying, if you if you kill him, he goes to darkness, which is him. 
Mm-hmm. So he's unkillable? I don't I don't care if you're unkillable as long as you are beatable. I just want to know if Noel is like if he only exists in one universe or if he's like a multi dimensional creature as well. I would Sorry, assume I he's multi dimensional. Yeah, I'm I'm assuming you mean he l- exists on every plane yeah. as one. Yeah, I'm yeah. assuming it's that. It's like dark side level. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming it's that. Why? There can only be one. How can he have multiple Why? Nodes? <laughs> Why not? That's awesome. You don't like that? I don't know. I mean, I was annoyed immediately when I heard that Noah's existed before everything. I was like, yet again, another <laughs> motherfucker that existed before everything. Yeah, yeah, I know. But as as the nerd in me, I like it. It's also one of those things when I was thinking it was like he existed before there was anything. I was like, but but like when the previous universe died, the new one was instantly born. So you were just surrounded by darkness for like point zero 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 one seconds. Well, he was left alone. Everything like there were things born at the same time. It's just he was in that closed off darkness so when he was by himself he went yeah, I crazy. assume he just wasn't at the center point of it, the big bang exactly <laughs> he was just in the darkness and then once the big bang caught up to him which for him could have been a thousand years but for in reality it's like a snap of a finger yeah you know how things and he you was know immediately how... just upset he's like i don't like this light <laughs> leave me alone <laughs> i'm gonna go make a sword and and beat it and then it's gonna become life and then i'm gonna be trapped by this life <laughs> that's also another thing is like he literally got surrounded by his own creations this dude's supposed to be broken <laughs> I mean, it was, I, at his, I, it was at his weakest point, though. That, though. It was at his weakest point, though. Yeah. That was and when he was defeated, beaten. we know that Silver Surfer's the one that released him. Yeah, and Silver Surfer's the one that... He done fucked up. I was like, well, he's also the one that trapped him, too. That's a catch-22. That's what the fight at the beginning of the issue one was, was well, them he, fighting at the end of time. Yeah, or at the beginning but he was time, fighting, like, like some of, like, his creations, like, when he already tainted that planet. Okay, it wasn't Noel himself. Yeah, he, okay. he manifested his son, and then, he yeah, he also got surrounded. In a weakened state? In a weakened state? Yeah. I, I love it. I love it. A weakened state for someone that can't die. No, I'm talking about Silver Surfer. Oh yeah, yeah. He he did the power of the sun. He, in the weakened he was state. able to escape. <laughs> I mean, even in this in this issue too, he's like finally he was able to connect to the uh, incubator. He was able to actually have a mind meld. I'm I guess they didn't use that term, but yeah. I'm just gonna use that term uh, and actually talk to Galactus in hor- human form. Gallon. Gallon. Yeah. So you got Norrin and Gallon just straight chit chatting it up. So easy for me to remember his human name. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. it's not hard. Uh, but they have these talks, and like you know, and Galactus is you know, Gallon is straight up hitting him with like, man, you, you can't defeat darkness. Like, there's nothing you can do. Light, you can't have light without dark. Oh yeah. So that's funny. Surfer's like, I'm gonna kill you. He's like, but why? Should I not know what the crimes I'm gonna commit so that I can know why I'm gonna die? He's like, well, you're a bringer of death. He's like, awesome. <laughs> but isn't that what you're trying to do? You're trying to kill me so that we can bring balance. I was like, wow, mm, using words use on his him. own. Li- <laughs> yeah, used his own logic on him. He's like, well, I see what you did there. He's like, no, I don't care if a watcher told me that you were very important to balance. Like, they never intervene. Mm-hmm. And then they were like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're this actually might be the one- before they made that rule, though. <laughs> Potentially. Yeah. True. This could have been the thing that was like, okay, we're going to stop. Like, because they fucked up on Galactus. <laughs> They're like, damn it, we should have let him kill him. <laughs> but he comes to that realization. He's like, what? You can't fight darkness with darkness. What are you going to do? Burn. Yeah. Woo! He's like, fine. Ego, I need you to help me out. Mm-hmm. This is where he's going to pick up his favor on Ego, and that's going to be dope. This is when he pulls a DBZ move. All right, man, I got real worried for a moment. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, yeah, you're good, man. You're good. Stop being fat. Gosh. But yeah, he pulls a DBZ move. He's like, Ego, I need you to connect me to everything. <laughs> <laughs> connect me to everything. He's, he's, he's trying to connect everything, maybe bring as much light as he can to his body. Yeah, uh, he actually says he wants them to like suffocate or like choke the darkness with it and then put it into him. So I don't mm-hmm. know necessarily what the hell that meant. I think he's trying to, I don't know. See, you, it made it seem like he's summoning light, but it also mm-hmm. seems like he's summoning darkness because then the next issue's page, which is just a cover art, doesn't really always spoil things, uh, is that he's all black now. Mm-hmm. So is he in the next issue going to be all black? Oh, yeah, I definitely think so. I think Surfer's going to oh. become like an instrument of death at the end of this. Dude. If they bring back that Silver Surfer, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to hate on it. If it's only for a stint, I'm not going to hate on it. But he's going to be by himself. He's not going to be a herald. He's just going to be the bringer of death. What if that's the change? Uh, Instead maybe. of Galactus, it's Silver Surfer, the bringer of death. He's definitely seems like he's going to become evil somehow, but I'm like, very excited to see how that happens. I don't know, man. I mean, given how he's written so far, it really seems that he's like... But once again, if you're corrupted and you can't control the darkness, I mean, you know, there's only so much you can do. I forget. It Ego makes you go me. mad. It's like... like what are you going to do with this? He's like, I will no longer curse the darkness. And he's like, then what will you do? And he says, burn. Yeah, and he's and holding that, that page, little bit in his hand, right? Yeah, he's got like so a lot well, of light like in lightning. his like right hand. Mm-hmm. And then you see like the shadow of that dragon that Noel was riding like uh, reflected on Ego. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't realize it was through the blackness. That's dope. It's like, man, good art. 
Seriously, yeah. fucking that's the Trad best Moore and David Stewart. Seriously. And he helped with the story, too. He's not just listed as the art. Story oh, really? and art. Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, Trad Moore. Yeah. Um, wow. He did the cover for the annual for uh, Justice League Dark. First off, can we acknowledge that that dude's name is Trad? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just, just going to put that out there. Very close to... Uh, maybe he's like the super alpha Chad. Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, Trad. <laughs> Came here to fucking pound some brews. Where's Chad, Brad, and Thad? <laughs> Cause Trad's here. It's a pretty unique name. Yeah, that's unique. Yeah, to say the least. I assume Dave Stewart did the color. He can't be super douchey because he writes comic books. So, I mean, but with the popularity of what comic books are being now, maybe he is like super douchey. I don't know. Donny Cates I is pretty down to earth. A, uh, I can't think of a single artist or writer for comics that's kind of a dick. That's, I that is a dick. You actually, said? hold on. I was gonna say um, uh, they interviewed Donny Cates at the chat con. He's he was pretty awesome. Fuck. Who is the guy that wrote the Return of the Dark Knight? Oh, uh, wow, and that's Sin embarrassing. City. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, Frank Miller. Frank Miller. Uh, I'm not gonna say he's an asshole, but he seems to be kind of going crazy. <laughs> what has I he been doing? I think he became like a conspiracy dude after the whole 9/11 thing. <laughs> and Alan Moore seems to just hate anything that, of his that gets adapted, even though he clearly okay's it. <laughs> Alan Moore, though, looks like a fucking hatchet killer. Like, he looks like an <laughs> axe murderer. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. I can see it. But he created some amazing things, so all respect Oh, shut up, Swamp guy. Thing. Shut yeah, and, up, and Swamp Watchmen. Thing. Hey, he didn't create Swamp Thing. He just made he just him made fucking it popular. awesome. <laughs> he just is what made him amazing. Even though when I first got into Swamp Thing, it was because of uh, Scott Snyder. Really? Yeah, New 52. God, that story was so badass. Wow. Okay, okay. Respect, respect. Uh, overall, Silver Surfer Black. This is definitely my favorite issue of the series so far. Mm-hmm. And it's been really good, all four issues, honestly. Yep. One and two were bangers. Third one was, I mean, compared to what we've gotten through four issues, the weakest, but still a great issue. The first two were the best. But, I you mean, these so? are still setting up for like the final fight. So I, I get mean, that. Five and six. And also, this issue is was five, pretty damn but badass. Five of the last one or six? Yep, five. Final five. Fuck yep. me. Fuck me. <sighs> Another mini. <sighs> That's. Breaks my heart. Gunny Cates, anything that he's right now, he just has to bring in his own character, Noel, though. So I'm pretty sure that when he <laughs> takes over <laughs> Thor in January, that's also going to be Thor fighting Noel. I mean, I think Noel's going to be in the fucking King God of Thor. Goddamn, again. I think Noel. Why are you hating on Noel? We got to get this big bad out here, son. I mean, I, who's, I, who's fucking I can't with completely right now? hate who's it with Noel right because now? I get Donny Cates like he made the character he wants to write him, mm-hmm. but fuck, why you got to make someone that's so broken, dude? <laughs> dude, I mean. For all extensive purposes, he's broken, but he's not like he's being put. He's being thwarted at like every turn, even in the venom. Like he's getting you have, like you have venom in, like incapacity in miles. Yet yeah, true, that's true, and it's not even him. It's his like mostly. I just hate the. Fa- I just hate any villain with gigantic ass fucking teeth that take fifty percent of their face. <laughs> oh my god! So what? He wants to look like Dracula, man. Damn, Nosferatu hating motherfucker over here. Yeah, he kind of looks like uh, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> And that's how I met Peter. <laughs> Peter, we're having a flat meeting. Okay, you don't want to come? <laughs> Here's a hit of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the chicken and she's running around. Uh, I loved when he attacked him out in the uh, open. We're talking about what we do in the Shadows movie, by the way, if anyone's confused. Yeah, watch that for before you watch the show because it pales in comparison to the TV show, in my opinion. It's still worth a watch, though. Uh, because the, the idea is better for a TV format. Oh, yeah. 100%. That's the only reason. The movie's still great. It's I like still fun. The, uh, oh, still God. hilarious. What was what was, what was the mortal's name? In in the movie. In the movie, uh, I do not remember. Okay, well, Nick he, was the turned vampire. I liked. Yeah, he got. Viago so was uh, literally Tyka. telling everybody that he's a vampire. J- Jermaine was uh, <laughs> Vlad. I did think it was funny when he was at the uh, like that clerk or whatever. Mm-hmm. He's like, "I'm a vampire." He's like, "Okay, cool. I'm, I'm also oh, this." He's like, "No, but I really am." He's all right. Then show me something. And he actually like morphs his face a little bit and just scares the hell out of him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, check that the, out. He's the reason... Oh, never mind. I was going to say something. <laughs> what? He got someone killed. Well, I mean, you know, it's life. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying that's <laughs> life. The dude was thousands of years old before that. He got killed because some modern douchebag couldn't keep his mouth shut. Who was thousands of years? Peter. I know, that was he's hard. Yeah, that was hard. 8,000 years old. I like how he came out and... Uh, didn't he attack outside? He, like, flew yeah. up into the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Nick, when he's like finally, when you see him as a vampire he's trying to go in, he's like flying through the window for like 30 God, seconds. God, he's struggling. His like, legs it. are going in first. <laughs> like, God, you're going to attract the tension. What if our neighbors see? Why well, don't you eat that the biscotti? <laughs> Would you let out his vams? <laughs> mm, would you like some biscotti? 
I always like how uh, I think the main character for that movie too was also bad at hypnotism. Oh, I did think it was hilarious when they were hypnotizing the cops walking through their house. That was probably the best part. He's like, what is this? There's this burnt corpse. He's like, oh, that looks like that's a flammable liquid. And you got a lamp sitting on top of it? He's <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't see any uh, smoke detectors either. He's like, there's a smoke detector. Okay, there's a smoke detector. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whatever works, whatever gets it going. Yeah. So, uh, Steve, thoughts on some birds of prey, man? We got to see the trailer before we saw Joker. I was not impressed. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was what? like, it still looks like it's going to be like Suicide Squad like. I don't know. Yet again, it's just my complaint. I guess is what everyone else is complaining. Is it seems like too Harley central. Yep. I don't even think we saw anybody else in the trailer besides Harley. Like I don't think we saw like they showed the Hunters and the or uh, but they didn't really look like themselves. Well, I mean, technically Harley minus the 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 coloring didn't look like Harley. I hated her hair. Yeah. But yeah, in the trailer too, she's like the brightest thing in there. Like, everything else seems like kind of grim, dark still. Well, that's Harley, the the new age Harley too, especially with the the coloring and the face things and all that. Yeah, she's like the only thing with color. It seems. Uh, I mean, chick was wearing a nice blue dress. Yeah, I guess I didn't really catch that. Yeah, I mean, I thought uh, they showed Mew. That was the one with the helmet. Mary Elizabeth Weinstead. I think we saw a glimpse of Black Canary because we saw someone singing. And they showed like a glass vibrator. And they talked to the her. Room. She talked. That was who she was talking to at the beginning. Okay. Yeah. But they still don't really seem like their normal selves. Well, they didn't, we didn't show anything. Trailer, I was so. going to say, they didn't show anything except for hers, and it's called, like, The Emancipation of Harle- Har- Hensel- or Har- ah. Harleen Quinzel. Yes, Jesus. Mixing up the both names. It's not a good podcast for me, gentlemen and ladies. But, um, yeah, exactly. That, too, is just like, why didn't you just make a Harley movie? Well, it could just make us think, like, it's her thing. I mean, I'm not one to complain about a Margot Robbie Harley portrayal, because she was great in Suicide Squad. Uh, but I don't want it to only be focused on Harley. Exactly. But it's hard, you know, branch it off, get some Birds of Prey stuff. Maybe this will actually set up the separate solo movies for Canary and Huntress. That would be dope. I, don't I think know. they should. I don't know if we them. could do like a Canary solo movie. I'd like to see Green Arrow and Canary team up movie. I mean, you could if they did well enough in this movie. Yeah. But we'd have to, you know, we could just be ended up getting them like we could get a second Birds of Prey movie. You know what I'm saying? We'll see how this does. It's going to be dark. Uh, it is rated R. That's why. Kind of made me mad when I'm glad I found out that it was rated R because the trailer, she said, I'm hardly freaking Quinn. I'm like, man, she, fuck would have been like, come they on. They dropped an S-bomb in there somewhere, though. Well, she said piece of shit at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. No one gives a shit about us. It wasn't a red band trailer, so. No. She'll say fuck in the movie. I'm Maybe. hardly fucking Quinn. Come on. It's rated R. We'll they see. already said it's rated we'll R. We'll see. She pushed for it to be rated R. It's her story. They want too many tweens to watch it. Well, not. Margot is the one that wanted it to be rated R, and it's her story. Like She had a lot of influence on that. Really? Mm-hmm. That's what Nick was telling me. Then I'll yell at her if the birds of prey aren't featured prominently. <laughs> well, they they should. And there's a lot of uh, makes me think. Uh, and Nick was telling me about it uh, that we are going to get a more of a modern Harley too. Like what maybe take from her solo series that he's reading right now. Yeah, at one point it looked like she actually did talk into the camera. Uh, I think that was just how it was shaped. I don't think she broke the fourth wall. Okay. You talking about the like who are you guys? I can't remember. She was getting shot. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't think she actually like. Broke the fourth wall. I like the little gimmicky one. She was throwing the bomb out there. That felt real comic booky. I like that. Oh yeah. She's like, oh yeah. Can you do this for me, hun? Thank you. And just kept going. I was like, oh, okay. I don't care for the hair, but that's not. I mean, that's not going to ruin anything for me. Sucks you're not too boned. I mean, I'm not. Your response is not surprising. So <laughs> wow. I mean, I mean I, you're not. You know, I mean, you don't really care for Harley that much. I like Harley. I just like. I don't. I don't think she's a good enough character to like carry her own series or anything really? like that. Wow. Because. Yeah, I'll probably get flack for it, but I'm the one that thinks that she should usually be with Joker. Oof. Yeah, I know people are just like, oh, but that's not a good relationship. Uh, And that's why I like that. This is where we're going to edit this. Just because it shows that it's not a good relationship. I'm not saying like, oh, yeah, put her down or whatever. No, I just think it's... Because it also is like, I mentioned this in the previous cast, that if someone says that their like, relationship goals is Joker and Harley, just fucking dis- 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 dismiss anything that that person has to say. <laughs> uh, we're going to go silent for a little bit so Nick can edit this out. Uh, we're not going to say that on the podcast. All right, go silent for wow. about five seconds. I will not be. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be silenced. <laughs> Woo! Uh, he didn't mean that stuff. Uh, or mostly listeners. just because, like, yet again, I think I mentioned this in the previous comic that, like, if she's on her own, why the fuck does she still have like the whole clown get up and stuff? Well, I mean, it's kind of like all she knew. I mean, yeah, but I don't know. I mean, you know, now they're just turning her into like DC's version of Deadpool. I'm just saying, it's like you know, why did uh, why did Nightwing still stick like with the Bat thing when he's no longer a part of the Bat family? 
when he, he stepped he, off. He became Nightwing, and he does run mostly on his own. Yeah, but he's and still like the bat. The Bat family has, the whole has bat a thing. lot of issues, okay? Why the hell does <laughs> Batman saying. still tolerate Red Hood when he knows he's out there just capping people? <laughs> Why does Batman keep getting these little fucking children to die for him? Honestly? I don't know. You think he'd have learned his lesson by now? <laughs> you would think so. <laughs> After Tim Drake, though, I understand why he took Damien, because he's actually his son. And he wants Damien to fix... makes sense, because it's his fucking child. Yeah, and he wants to fix all the shit that happened to him. Mm-hmm. And I want Damien to become Batman, because it's well, the he most He is Batman logical... and deceased. I know. It's the only, mo- the only logical thing to do. It's his blood. If it's not Nightwing, it's got to be but fucking... But people would recognize, like, yet again, and deceased, like, why did Batman shrink, like, four feet? <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask questions on Batman. <laughs> <laughs> Because it, it's actually advantageous for my mobility that I shrunk myself. Yeah, it actually would be a good science. point. Like, it's harder to hit him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Science. What? <laughs> Lucius Fox, make me a better suit. But everyone's become Batman now. Uh, and we got some some more uh, Batman news as well. Speaking of Batman, uh, we got some more rumors. We got Jonah Hill being rumored to either play the Riddler, Bane, or Penguin. I think Bane's kind of out of the question. I don't even know how no. that's going to be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please don't let him be Bane. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think that's going to work. Uh, I can see him rock both of them. I can see him rock Penguin and, and the Riddler. I'd rather see him be the Riddler. I would, too, because I want Andy Serkis to be the Penguin, but I don't know if that's going to happen. Oh, that'd be cool. I think it, it, he could is he, money. Is and he he's, casted? Or no, rumored? he's not. Uh, there, was a, there was a big push for him to be the Penguin. They have even did some fan uh, arts and shit Danny like that DeVito and posted on back. IG. <laughs> he actually wasn't that bad of a Penguin. He was why. great. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> the uh, best part of the Michael Keaton movies was the villains, because mm-hmm. Michael Keaton is fucking shit. I know people hate on Jim Carrey's Riddler. I thought he was actually pretty funny. Well, he wasn't was mind-blowing. Huh? That wasn't Michael Keaton's. Oh, that was George Clooney's? Pretty sure that was I Michael fucking Keaton. Uh, it might have been Val Kilmer. Was that Arnold? He was in the one with Arnold. Mm-hmm. See, then that was Keaton. No, that, I thought that was just Riddler and Two Face with uh, Val might, Kilmer. Dude, it's been years. And, um, I thought I thought he was with uh, Swartz. Or was it the Penguin? That was, that was the the Penguin was with Bane Schwarzenegger and Mister Freeze and the George Clooney one. And then Bane, uh, Penguin was with the uh, Arnold. Then no, Penguin was just. I think that was just Penguin. It was just Catwoman a Penguin movie. And Michael Keaton. You sure that's a Michael Keaton? Okay. Yeah, that was okay. the second one. Okay. I. It's been a long time since I've with seen With Michelle Fifi? Yes. Okay. Just a pussy. I Overrated uh, Catwoman, but we're not going to go into that. Wow. I'm just saying, but speaking of Catwoman, there's also rumors people on hated, that. People hated on, um, damn it, what's her name? Uh, the one that Anne was- Anne Hathaway? Yes. Mm-hmm. I thought she did a good job. She did fine as Selena, not as Catwoman. She gave no seduction at all. She did not like. That's a big thing at Catwoman. Okay, the, that's she, a fair point. Selena, she was awesome. Yeah, she nailed the personality. But Catwoman, she gave no like sense of seduction, and that's that movie kind of was like a shit fucking anyway. Emo. So, oh uh, yeah, I forgot you weirdly hate that movie. Uh, but speaking of Catwoman, a couple more rumors on there. We got Lupita Nyong'o, which is like, I mean, acting wise, fucking amazing. But I don't know seduction wise. So that's why I would go with the other rumor casting, and she's also just so great in that movie, The Perfection. Logan Browning. I would love to see that. I think she would be able to pull the look off. I think she'd be able to pull the acting off. And Lupita, I think, obviously, Lupita would be able to Lupita destroy was the acting. Lupita right? Uh, yes. Okay, I She's think that's the, the only thing I've seen her in. Uh, Black Panther. Who was she in that? Nokia. She was Black Panther's uh, girlfriend. Yeah, that's Lupita. I don't remember that. Yeah. I need to rewatch that movie. I mean, she had a shaved head, so man. You've seen it twice, haven't you? No. You only watched it once? Yeah. Were you not doing the podcast when we talked about Black Panther? That was Nick and I? I think so, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, she was the girlfriend in that. Okay. Or queen, I guess, now. They're married, I think. Did they get married? I can't remember. I don't think they got married. They're together. I don't remember the queen. Well, that's his mom. That was uh, uh, Angela Bassett. Okay, I think that's who I was thinking of. Yeah, no. It's the one that he helped from the Jeep. Remember? He's like, you ruined my undercover mission. No? Okay. I don't recall. No? Okay. I mean, it's the only person that Black Panther flirted with the whole movie. You racist fuck. I don't remember him flirting You with racist anybody. fuck. God. You will respect. I respect Black Panther. This is Wakanda. It wasn't like it's not like Captain Marvel. It was actually a decent movie. Great. Now he's admit. Now he's openly admitting he's sexist and racist. Jesus. I am so sorry, my listeners. I, I mean, just get shit on every cast. We, Why am I here? We're, we're gonna get Nick back next week. <laughs> he did Nick shit on you last week. Yes, I get called a misogynist by him like at least once a fucking week. <laughs> well, I didn't call you misogynist. I just called you sexist. You called me. That's the same damn thing. <laughs> I know, but I didn't call you misogynist. Okay. Uh. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited for those rumors. I'm fine with either one. I'd prefer Logan. Hey, this is for Nick. Fuck Ray. Ooh, that hurts me too, dude. I love Ray. <laughs> Second best character in the new trilogy. That's not saying much. Okay, dude. 
Uh, when, uh, can we just Han let's just Solo and Joker Rebel fine better. movie podcast over? All right, there we go. Jesus, I agree. Conclusion. I agree. Conclusion. <laughs> mm, Joaquin. Jesus is what I needed after I saw the Joker. <laughs> Was there no other news to report on? Uh, well, I don't know. You're just gonna shit on it. Fuck Ray. Fuck wow. Star Wars. Fuck Disney. Oh, uh, speaking of Disney, even though it has nothing to do with Disney. <laughs> China banned South Park. I mean, it kind of has to do with them because that whole episode was about how it had a lot of Hollywood, mostly Disney, since they own half of Hollywood, just like censors things and like at least skirts around certain topics to appease China so that way they can still release their shit in Mm -hmm. China and Mm -hmm. capture some of that demographic. But they hit it pretty hard on the head. I mean, they even brought brought up the Wendy the Pooh thing. They even brought up the harvesting organs. Mm -hmm. They even brought up... uh, uh, you can't criticize government, which is pretty public knowledge. That's just point. a I mean, common that's, thing. Yeah, that's not. China is a fucking living episode of Black Mirror. <laughs> I mean, they were even. Like, <laughs> it's, no, it is because it's about to dive. Be. It's about to be. Well, they've actually been doing that already. It's just going into oh, full it's a beta. effect. It's a basic beta. Yes. Oh, <laughs> shit. That's fucking terrifying. Terrifying. What does President Pooh have? I mean, uh. <laughs> well, I mean. This just in our podcast is no longer allowed in China. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In case you were worried. All of a sudden, we have no views. <laughs> like, oh, my God. How oh my are they God. the ones that were listening to us? <laughs> no, come back, Jeff. <laughs> I didn't realize you moved to China. <laughs> That's hilarious. But, yeah, another thing that they didn't touch on is, like, they've actually been um, causing, like, somewhat of a genocide for, like, uh, their Muslim group in China. Because, like, the women, there they're actually, like, uh, making them infertile. Mm. <laughs> so, so, it's, like, nothing, like, that China's not doing that's just, like, evil as hell, it seems. Right. I am now under the impression that China's like worse than North Korea. It mostly because the world tolerates what they do because China provides so much fucking manufacturing and I was trade. Just saying, they, they have like, they have more capabilities of doing things than North Korea too. North Korea has like like North Korea to trade with. Or uh, has China to trade with. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> China what, has is trading with everybody. What a quinky dink that they're both connected with each other. Right? China's like, I'm not I'm not quite done with North Korea yet. Hold on, hold on, hold on. They still, they still, they have good meetings. They sit down. They talk about their love for Dennis Rodman. It's because they buy some of their shit. <laughs> they love Dennis Rodman equally. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm pretty sure South Park's just gonna double down on their whole China ridicule now. Oh man, yeah. I, at least I hope so. I said that to Nick. Uh, they ain't got integrity. <laughs> they ain't got integrity. I sent that to Drew. I said, man, they're gonna double down. He's like, what? Make make other countries hate us? I was like, no. <laughs> just make fun of you. <laughs> we don't really need South Park's help for that. Yeah, we're doing a good enough yeah, job. We, on we our do own. our own job. <laughs> As tourists and our president. All hail uh, the supreme ruler, Trump. Yep. I knew China was going to go downhill even more so when it was like five years ago or something when Jinping gave himself indefinite power. I was like, well, that's never a good thing. Yep. yep. Trump's going to do it this year. <laughs> and the world is just going to be Don't like, fucking okay. try. We'll be like, okay. All right, let's not get too political. Now. All right, let's, yeah, this isn't a political podcast. This is a PC it's podcast. Like Joker. Joker's not political. Mm, no, he got pretty political. He said he's not political. He, he said he's He, he clearly said, said that, Josh. Were you not listening to the man? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, try not to listen to him too close because he's crazy. Oh, whatever, In man. case somebody needs that disclaimer, this person is not good. This person does bad things the entire movie. None of it is justified. He's crazy, crazy, crazy. If you now, let's talk about the If movie. you can't tell, we weren't murdered at the showing, so. Yeah, and we had no intentions of murdering anybody. I mean, speak for yourself. I have no intentions of murdering I anybody. I see Nick sharpening his knife right now. Like I said, I have no intentions. Oh, God, Nick, stay away. Nick, Nick! <laughs> uh, but, but overall impressions before I get into this, because uh, Steven's not going to talk. I'm going to try to not breathe this episode, so I'm just going to keep talking, keep ad-libbing, keep making <laughs> stuff up. Steven, stop laughing. Uh, no. uh, I liked it. Had a blast. Uh, it could have been boring if Joaquin wasn't on the screen at all times. Well, I'm and glad he fucking that he was. was. <laughs> I know, but like they didn't they didn't really focus on anything else and that's I'm glad that they did. It was literally just a, Are we almost get spoiler heavy. I mean, I would assume but we always okay. do. Yeah, we always do. There's no point to hold back. I just remember a few casts ago Nick said that you guys were trying to be less spoilery. You want to? We can hold back no, on some things. I don't give a I don't shit. mind. Fuck the viewers. Okay. <laughs> fuck the viewers. Uh spoiler, Joaquin Phoenix is the Joker. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. I know. I know. Uh but during this whole thing, it's, uh, especially when you go on after uh, after watching it, you go online and there's all these different theories because this is a very ambiguous movie. Oh, once, yeah. once it's all said and done. Ambiguous. Yeah, once well, it's all said and done. I won't say super, but there is a lot it's of ambiguity pretty, to be like, had because some of the things that you think would like be left open to interpretation are just straight up revealed. Mm-hmm. Mostly um, 
the girl that he was talking to, that his like potential love interest, uh, I forget her name, Domino, and uh, Zazie Beats, and Donald Glover's girlfriend in Atlanta, Zazie Beats, V, I, V, no. whatever, Val, Val, mm, I actually, I think they called her, I think he calls her V, but she, I think it's like Veronica or Valerie, I can't remember her name, but yeah, they make her like a potential love interest, and like uh, he tells her to go see him at the comedy club, and uh, he stalks her. Mm-hmm. And she's like approaches him at his door and was like, "Were you following me around?" Seems flattered by it, which is when I was just immediately just like, "This can't be real, right?" Yeah, right. I was like, "Turns the- out later in the movie, she's well." He uh, most she, of the scenes that we've seen with them did not actually happen. Yeah, it was exactly. just him imagining this um, person with him. Other things. I thought they did a good job showing his descent into madness too. Big like spoiler here that... Sorry, you can go on. No, go ahead. I was right. just saying Descent into Madness. Big spoiler uh, here, because this is when I read on Reddit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, this is another thing that's potentially like... You can interpret it however you want. Uh, he f- sees a letter that his mother was writing to Thomas Wayne, talking about how she needs their help, and how like her and his son, uh, Arthur, you know, Joker, really need their help, and he gets... Uh, pretty upset about that and he starts trying to stalk Thomas Wayne and confront him about that Mm -hmm. but then later on when he goes to um, because she was committed to Arkham Asylum at one point he gets some public records we assume it's Arkham they never dropped a name yeah it's some sort of well I think it no when he's walking there it said Arkham State Hospital did it say Arkham State Hospital so that's probably what becomes Arkham Asylum yeah possibly see I didn't man I'm mad I didn't catch that because I was waiting for that big reveal I was like oh man give me a little hint at that yeah okay cool he gets some public records, or well, not public records. That's why he had to steal them. Yeah. <laughs> um, he gets her files, and it reveals that like there was an adoption file in there, so she adopted him. Mm-hmm. So maybe he's not uh, Thomas Wayne's son. But at the same time, Thomas has the pull to be able to fake adoption papers for somebody that he accidentally impregnated because she's fucking crazy. Absolutely, because that kind of happened in uh, the New Fifty Two, the Court of Owls storyline. Um, they gave up their second son. Mm-hmm. Who becomes uh, Talon for? That's uh, dope. Yeah, they. I can't. I can't remember the exact reasons, but they gave him into an orphanage. But uh, Martha would still go visit him occasionally. Mm. Why but, would you risk that? Exactly. So they might have been pulling from that. You're Martha Wayne. They're going to clearly know who you are. You know? I'm pretty sure at some point across like the 77 years that Batman's existed, that like Joker was Batman's brother at some point in the comics. I think that'd be a cooler connection. Like he's relayed, cut from the same cloth, but just I like how it is. You like what it is he's now? He's just someone that just got inspired to become the opposite of Batman. I guess, and I can't live without him. Like if Batman's not doing anything, Joker's not doing anything. Yeah, which is not <laughs> how this is because no. Batman's not it, like he doesn't exist yet. He exists in this in this universe. Batman, or sorry, Joker spawns the creation of Batman because mm-hmm. he inspires the person that murdered his family at the very very tail end of the movie. Yep, we get a mini uh, Batman origin. <laughs> yeah, which it's probably as, like an. As a, soon as I saw them leaving the theater, I rolled my eyes. I was like, "Here we fucking go again oh for the God. goddamn tenth time an, on film." It, it was an. Uh, I know. It was an ode to the for the Batman fans. It was. Not, I still glad they did it. The whole typical uh, Zorro, pull, the Zorro being the movie, uh, pulling the necklace off with the beads falling yeah. off the pearl necklace. It's always a big iconic moment. That's cool. I like that because it's. It wasn't a focus on that. It just boom. Here we go. Like he was at the theater and waited for him to come out. Like He was, he met him at another theater mm-hmm. when they were watching a oh, play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Charlie Chaplin. Yeah, Charlie, they were watching a Charlie <laughs> Chaplin. And, uh, which is like, why is everyone laughing at this dude skating around a room? God, life back Comedy then was so was fucking so boring. Comedy simpler I know. back then, it's, dude. Yeah, yeah. Well, to an extent. But it's a masterpiece. Anyways. <laughs> I like Chaplin. Yeah, but I'm just saying, all he was doing was riding roller blades or roller skates in a they circle. They were silent films. You couldn't do shit back then. I don't care. That's not funny. Whatever, man. Maybe you, back you then. You don't know humor. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. <laughs> back then, when all you had was to poke dead bodies, God, that was a riot. <laughs> but I'm supposed to just no, appreciate. Dude. I'm supposed no, to what appreciate people did for it now. Entertainment back then was watch dogs fight each other. And like, <laughs> <laughs> when it was legal, and back when America was great. up Negroes. <laughs> <laughs> back when America was great. Jeez, that stuff's terrible. Mm-hmm. I respect Chaplin, though. I mean, just because I'm not a fan of his stuff, I mostly I just like the whole fork dancing thing. <laughs> And his little speech at the end of whatever movie it was. It yeah, was I love that. Critical I love that movie. <laughs> I see, it's, a, it's a clip I've seen on YouTube. I don't know what it's from. I just thought it was a pretty decent I love speech that back movie. in the day. Uh, but man, Joaquin, he he steals this. I mean, not, I mean, that's, not that they really an gave anybody else. Much, yeah, let's say like, they didn't time. give anyone else a chance or time. <laughs> yeah. uh, but this whole time, his descent into madness was just 
sad and wonderful to see. It's dark. It's fucked up. Like that's what he's done. What excellent he's, portrayal of like how mental illness is treated, especially back in the seventies. Yeah, especially which I think is when this takes place. I think, man, I, like some of the sets in the TV show made me feel seventies hardcore. The talk show. There's man, color TV. Uh, yeah, but it was like I mean, color TV was back then. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, but just everything, but like there were certain moments that like when they were running through the city and stuff, it seemed a little too modern, but that's just me. Yeah, but. <laughs> Still didn't take away from anything. I was going to say what city did this place take in. It's fucking uh, Gotham. Gotham. <laughs> <laughs> it's Gotham. But, uh, but at the same sure time, Gotham's see, it's like big... usually like kind of inspired by like Brooklyn or whatever. Well, even in that set, it's so like this is a very grimy city. Mm-hmm. But with the comic book, you know, they could still be advanced for the 70s. Like, yeah. Given what we've, like, the oh, comic yeah, books are kind of, they're yeah. ahead of the time, like, what we would be in the 70s. Mm-hmm. So, like, they're wearing more modern clothes. Like, they're not wearing 70, typical 70s, dude. Like, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. That's why I was just like, these seem like, at first I thought it was the 90s. Mm-hmm. Gave, gave that kind of feel. Yeah. Uh, a lot of fish lens. Uh, fish <laughs> lens. <laughs> yeah, that stuff you see in skater videos. Oh, that was very 90s. Yeah. That didn't happen in this. They did a really good job, and Nick made a point. It's hilarious. Uh, when we came in today, talking about how you can tell Todd Phillips has seen a shit ton of Scorsese films and was like, this is my masterpiece. This is my shit. It's like he also watched There Will Be Blood a shit ton of times and was like, I'm going to zoom. I'm going to do a soft zoom and I then very focus in, which I liked it. But I'm, I, yeah, I'm, I'm a big think, fan of camera work like that. I distracted by it like no. he did because he saw it happen a lot. I mean, yeah. I caught it, but I didn't think it was like overly distracting. But I thought that was cool that they would do over, it for Necessarily overused. Mm-hmm, agreed. I just thought it was cool that they would do that for a like a villain movie. Like they're treating it as if it is an art project. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not just like, oh, we're gonna do because you are supposed to sympathize with him to an extent. To an extent, but you're not supposed to be like, this is right. Like yeah, none you're of not it is supposed right. To cheer him Zero on. percent of this. You're is supposed right. to understand why he kind of becomes the way that he is. Exactly. So for a sane person seeing this, you're like, man, I could see it, but it's wrong. Now imagine a crazy person seeing this; they're it's probably gonna think this needed, is okay. He needed a lot more help. And no one was giving it to him. Yeah. Even the person he was going to, he even was like, do you even listen to me? Like, you never listen to anything because I Because I think say. she was really terrified by him. Probably. <laughs> She's like, they probably didn't even lose funding. She's probably like, I'm going to fucking get murdered one day. I think they day. definitely did. I don't right. know. That's I don't know. pretty fucking illegal, I think, <laughs> if, if she did that. It's the 70s. That's and true. I don't want to die. Because <laughs> his mother did, like, I don't think you actually see the complete word on the page, but she was given a lobotomy at one point, which uh, used to happen a lot back in the day. Yep, and it did nothing except... Ruin people. I guess she was way more coherent than what delusions. people. Yeah. She was true, way more yeah. coherent than somebody that got a lobotomy, though. Yeah, you would think he got a lobotomy because he can't write for shit, dude. Well, yeah, and it's and not, not like, like he was taught. Well. It's probably, just his handwriting was just. Well, really he probably bad. has never had a formal education too. That's true, cause dude. They even admitted he was tied to a fucking radiator and was and abused for decades. And yeah, decades. and graped <laughs> for decades and decades. Inappropriate. And this is a white kid, you know, reference. Yep. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying we're not we're not advocating rape here. Come on, guys. No. It's comedy. Jeez. But yeah, he had a uh, very unfortunate childhood. This is also like one of the things like, is it nature or nurture that drove him down this path? Probably a little bit of both. I was about to say his mixture. He was not nurtured properly, and then the nature surrounding him was not so hot. You're oh, in Gotham. Yeah. You're in the worst city ever. Which, <laughs> yeah. you could, which you could argue that this was the start of why Gotham became Gotham, though. At least in this, well, in, not, the, in the did, cinematic. He didn't universe. drive it like that because they already said at the beginning, like when the movie's starting and you just see him doing his makeup, the t- TV's talking about how like crime is escalating and true, there's true. fucking super rats now, apparently. Yeah, it's true. And now they're going to use super cats. To <laughs> yeah. <laughs> true. Never mind. They did mention at the beginning that crime was at an increase. So his his stunt did not help things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He definitely drove things way over yeah, the edge. Yeah. Kills I mean, three people, openly yet admits again, killing three yet people. Yet again, if that's not all in his head. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of scenes in this that make you think. Did that happen, or was this just all a delusion? Because I think it's like the first 20 to 30 minutes, um, you see him banging his head against like an asylum door. But she mentions that, though. She yeah. mentions you were locked up before. Yeah. So that's not like a past. That's a past thing. That clearly was like, that's past. But some people think that it might just be like the whole movie is just in his head while he's talking to the psychiatrist or something. Hmm. Maybe. At the very end scene? Maybe. Well, either way, he killed yeah, her. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> either way, he killed her. With the very ending, yep. it might be the same. Okay. All, all, my, all but the, but the scene's not the same. Yeah. So he's still smoking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which I'm waiting for people to complain about that. It's also Everyone else to complain about the gun violence and this and this and this, and they, but they bring up cigarettes and anything and everything else. But there's, there's more pressing matters. He's killing yeah, people. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> cigarettes killing people, though. 
Mm-hmm. And way more people than guns. <laughs> if people start trying to fucking take cigarettes out of all movies, I'll be livid. It it's just not like make... it's not like it's a promoting smoking. I think it just helps deliver like certain characters' aspects. Oh man, and also uh, it, it helps deliver points. Yeah, well, when you're smoking a cigarette, it just you, looks dope, you, man. You take, <laughs> exactly. I don't smoke cigarettes. I used to. You know, I vape. It's whatever. Uh, you're but get you get popcorn s- lung. But you smoke that. I don't smoke illegal fucking black market. You're vapes, gonna get right? popcorn lung. I'm, I don't smoke. You're illegal. the guinea pig. <laughs> Uh, but we have when you're saying something, and you take that drag in the middle, and then when you like for an exclamation, you you fucking put that shit out in the ashtray instead of the dude in the eyes. I'm just saying that's way more intense than me just fucking telling you. Yeah, I liked when he did it when you invited those two people that he two previous coworkers into his apartment. He puts it out on the wall and like make like a smiley face with it or something. Did he? I thought he just did like a C or something. He did something. Yeah, I thought it was sp- a s- bit of a smiley face. He spelled maybe. Joker. <laughs> I'm- I really thought he was going to kill that uh, little person. Dude, yeah. Whatever the, whatever the PC term is now. Uh, pers- it's just, it was back in the 70s. I'll just call him a midget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're not in the 70s. Whoa, 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 whoa. He does not mean that. Uh, if any of you are listening, I th- we I still love Nick you. I equal. thought it would have been funny if, like, when he was letting him out the door and he couldn't reach the latch, if he's just, here, I'll help you, and he dragged the other dude's body over there so that he could have stepped on top of him. I thought that would have been funny. Well, I kind of laughed when funny, he, but it didn't Yeah, I kind of laughed when he, like, fake jumped at him. Yeah, that's <laughs> that fucked up, funny. dude. He kills a dude, and then he's like, "No, you can leave. I, I'm not. I have nothing against you. I've always liked you." And he like walks by him, and he like kind of lunges at him like he's gonna kill him. That's... I've been too scared to walk by him. No, absolutely. <laughs> I'm like, I'll take the fire escape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna climb out the window. <laughs> hits the floor. <laughs> but um, Nick had a point where like he thought that that was very unjoker of him because he spares him. He's like, "You were always kind to me," and like kisses him on the head because he kind of like sympathized with him or related to him. Mm-hmm. And when Joker's not supposed to do that with anybody, uh, this is early Joker though, man. I was also just like, this is an Elseworld story, Elseworld story, and it's early Joker. Yeah, you know what I mean. I I could see Joker <laughs> doing that. Like, it's not senseless at first. That was a pretty then fucked it becomes up Joker. Senseless. He was like, did you get another gig? Why, what's with the makeup? He's like, no, my mother just died. I'm celebrating. <laughs> I was like, holy <laughs> shit. I know. Why would you walk into that house after that? Immediately, like, I'm leaving because the cops are showing up saying there's people with clown people. Also, yeah. dude sold him a gun. That's what I'm saying. Gave him a gun. Didn't even sell it. Just gave him a yeah. gun. Yeah. So you think he would have came strapped? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you have, why would you go into that? They're looking for a guy that's dre- that was a clown makeup and shot somebody. You know, shot someone three people. shot three people. You know, someone personally. That had a gun. That had a gun. It took just to got the fired. Children's Hospital. And God, just that was to, hilarious. God, I know. I totally expected that gun to go off and shoot somebody. <laughs> Especially when he kicked it away. When he kicked it away, I was like, oh my God, a cancer kid's about to die. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. That scene was very... Uh, and there really wasn't was as much kinda, death in this. Depressing. Like as much people... Like there's really not a lot of death in this movie. I'm pretty sure someone was about to catch, like, set himself on fire at the end. But he didn't. We did see total, it. There was a total of someone like pouring gasoline. Over there were a head. total of six deaths, which is is still a lot. It is a lot, but there was a total of six deaths that we that we know of. Nope, seven, eight. Fuck, no, never mind. There was eight. Eight. You got what? Zazie and her daughter. Oh, and then the uh, and well, then the fu- and then not, the therapist. That might not have been a killing. That could have been something else. Well, they showed the scars on his chest when exactly. he walked off. So, so he, he was ki- fighting her. Yeah, and what was he fighting her for? He just he killed because he was enamored with her. I know, but he still might have killed her. Yeah. You think he just raped her? Maybe. I mean, I, he never gave rape vibes. Usually when I mean, we I saw... Ki- I don't know, he did... He did obviously have a huge crush on her. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I never usually think of the Joker as a rapist, even though everyone says that he probably raped Barbara Gordon in a killing joke. Pretty sure he did. They had a video on it. He made a video. He took pictures of her, like, naked and shot through the center. But he, like, he, they didn't show penetration because they can't show <laughs> penetration. But they didn't even show anything alluding like directly to that, besides the fact that I guess she's naked. I mean, I don't think I, I'm pretty sure. I've never I'm pretty sure of, the Joker raped her. Like, I know a lot uh, of people that's, say that's, that. A lot of people say that, but I've never, I've never thought of the Joker as like being a person that's motivated by sex. That's true. That's true. But because he has no real motivation except to. But then like you other said people before, have said like maybe he wasn't really just like an erotic thing for him. He just wants to like torture someone and just cause up. chaos. Exactly. But I'm like, yeah, I guess that's a potential thing, but... So he might not be getting off, but he knows it's getting off because he's fucking with somebody's head. Mm-hmm. That's fucked up, dude. Mm-hmm. It's fucked up. But, you know, then again in the fucking movie, uh, Barbara Gordon never fucked Batman. <laughs> I actually didn't mind that. It makes sense. I don't know why I wouldn't. <laughs> That's such a wouldn't. fucking messed up thing for him to do because Barbara Gordon and Nightwing are a constant thing and he's just gonna... T- not at this point. Not at this point. In the family. She's also a fucking minor. I'm the goddamn Batman. I'm pretty sure she's also a minor. Uh, 
She's also spo- like, she he's also yeah, supposed she, to be a father figure. Was she a minor in the Dark Knight? I'm just saying. You see Bruce Wayne. How do you not? That's oh, all I'm saying. God. I'm just saying. You see Bruce Wayne. How do you not? We saw we saw Batcock. Batcock has been now drawn. It's pretty good. And then immediately censored. <laughs> and then immediately censored. It was like they was like thinking the second and third. What they blurred out with a bat wing? I think they just took it out. Oh, lame. I wish they'd blur. I was out just like disappointed they didn't have bat pubes. <laughs> wow, really going all out for this, aren't you, Bruce? <laughs> Big fan. Big fan. We couldn't do pubes because then if he slept with anybody, they'd immediately been like, "Well, that's a little weird." I know. My or favorite, he could be a fanatic. My favorite mention of Batman having sex is uh, in a Catwoman issue in the New Fifty Two when she says like. They'd meet up on rooftops, have sex. It was o- always over quickly. And I was like, wow. <laughs> Tell me that that's the one thing that Batman's not excellent at that, is fucking not premature ejaculating. <laughs> that's his weakness. That's why he has to cover it up with being a badass, being a billionaire. <laughs> he comes fast. <laughs> He's like, don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's also, they were both like in full outfits. It's like, tell me Batman just has a zipper. <laughs> Uh yeah, are we really gonna question that? Dude has shark repellent. He's prepared for any situation. That's only on the helicopter. He's prepared for any situation. <laughs> it's also funny. He's like, why does he have shark repellent in a fucking helicopter? Because why not? Just in case he crashes into the water. The you need shark repellent. All right. Man, uh, Joker. Man, Joaquin. He is my number one for the year. As of now, I still think that Taron Edgerton for playing Elton John in. Rocket Man still might be better. Those that they are you just tied said number, he's one. number one. I know. I, that, well, I followed it with oh, another okay. sentence that was like, you know, like Possibly by default because up. I just watched this movie today. Yeah, he's number one. Okay, but I'm gonna go ahead and just put them at one one until I rewatch Rocket Man and then I rewatch the Joker. They were both excellent. It's hard not to put Joaquin given his time on the fucking screen, and you never felt like it was dragging because yeah. of Joaquin. Like you know what I mean? Like there was somewhat boring scenes, but like you're always like. Oh, here he goes with that weird laugh again. He's like smiling for full fucking no reason. <laughs> you and Nick also agreed that like the only true Joker life is when he gets called to the boss's office. Yep, that's the truest like, the super one. And then one. he cuts it. That was the most eerie part of the whole fucking movie for me. Just because how straight, man, that's good acting. Damn, that's good acting. Nick also said he was like really disturbed when he was meeting Bruce Wayne. I thought that yeah, that, that was, was weird because I was like, okay, they're making him a pedo. <laughs> They're adding another dimension to that creepiness, like that, dude. I maybe. immediately was like, "Oh, this is weird." He's like showing him magic tricks. I was like, "Oh, please don't do this route." Don't see. Do I this thought route. it was just trying to charm him so that way he could possibly get like brought into the damn mansion. That's what my guess was because he kept trying to open, like magically open the door. Yeah, yeah I think that's exactly. what he was trying to do. Oh, good point. Yeah, that's what I kept. That. He kept doing that, like it was supposed to be magic. I'm assuming. Uh, and then he touched his face. And I'm like, dude. First off, why is this kid so chill with a stranger touching his face? You're a billionaire, son. Why are you? You know you're not taught like this. The kid is sheltered as hell. I don't care. But you're yeah, like, I did immediately. I was he like, looked this kid's what? so emotionless. He looked like nine, ten years old. How old was Batman when he died? When the parents died? He was like nine or ten, right? About that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah about that Enough age. to be articulate and like understand strangers are bad. <laughs> like you know, that scene. Like every scene was set up pretty well. I feel like the descent to madness was done really, really well. Camera work was great. Score was really good. Some of the directing and some of the choices were weird. Uh, what was the big thing I said after when we walked out? The kid, like the well, I know it's the seventies. Protection wasn't the same, but the kids not doesn't have body multiple bodyguards on him. As a mul- he did like, have the one run up the to one him, but later, way too late. Yeah, way too late <laughs> after the dude's already mauling this dude's face. He could have killed Bruce Wayne right there, and no one would have known because mm-hmm. there's no fucking cameras. So yeah. when he just I killed, thought he killed the guard for a second when he man, started choking. When he started choking, stabbed him in the throat. <laughs> yep, when he started choking him, I was like, oh my god, he's just gonna kill this kid in front of Bruce. And that's not what sets him crazy. Also, Thomas Wayne is such a fucking asshole. Dude, in this I movie. know. Which usually his parents are like, yeah, they're billionaires, but they're usually like very model. Like, surprised citizens. they didn't have Alec Baldwin play Thomas Wayne. He actually yeah. probably would do a really good Thomas Wayne. I hate Alec Baldwin, but it, that would have been perfect for Thomas Wayne. Yeah, I mean, you saw him in that trailer. I'm actually going to watch that the Edward Norton movie. Really? I'm going to watch that, dude. I think it's going to be. He's going to kill it. Edward Norton's going to kill it. Willem Dafoe, Edward Norton. Yeah, it did have a damn pretty stud uh, star set of cast. <laughs> Bruce Willis, too. Bruce Willis was in it? I'm not big on Bruce Willis, but I'm not against Bruce Willis. Yeah. I just don't think he has range. He's a good complimentary actor. Yes. <laughs> and he can and he can pull a lead. He's just he's just always Bruce. He's never, I don't yeah. know. Doesn't blow me away. He's not a chameleon. I've heard he's pretty ego too. Edward Norton looks great in that movie, though. See. You didn't think so? You think that twitching is a the, little, little iffy. The Tourette's and the yeah. I mean that's accurate. I've no I've known someone that like he was he was killing that shit, dude. Yeah, I don't know. Edward Norton's kind of hit or miss for me sometimes. I get that. I, I get thought that. he was excellent in American History X. Mm-hmm. Have you seen? Uh, oh God, was it House of Leaves? No, that's a movie. Mm-hmm. 
Huh. I didn't think that there would be like a book that could be adapted. I think it was. I might have it mixed up. Uh, let me look at Edward Norton's. He's usually in a lot of, um, oh, fuck, like Tommy's favorite director. I, I thought he did uh, Wes Anderson movies. Wes An- yeah, okay. Uh, he's in a lot of those. Isn't yeah, he? he's been in a few of those. I thought he was a uh, really good Bruce Banner. That's that's still like the only. T- I know that's like technically a part of the MCU, right? Incredible Hulk. Yeah, yep, that one. That's is. still like the only one I haven't seen. Wow, really? Mm-hmm. I thought he. I, it's a fun. I movie, saw dude. the ending. Seriously, I check saw it out. like the yeah. fight with um, the abomination. Or yeah, whatever. yeah. I thought. I thought it was for what it was. It's a good movie. I mean, it's fun. I thought the Hulk. He does looked, a really good job. I thought Bruce the Banner. Hulk looked a bit short in that movie. <laughs> I mean, the best Hulk fucking moment ever has been the original Hulk. Not the original. When he Hulk, flexes and when, destroys when fl- that dog. When he the dog fighting scene, dude, that was amazing. He ripped a dog's jaw and then pff, flexes and cr- that's amazing. That was that a fucking pretty amazing. awesome. <laughs> uh oh, Fight Club too. You like Fight Clubs? Oh yeah, duh. Uh, you haven't seen Rounders? You should. It's really good. Uh, what's the movie? What am I looking for? After the Sunset? Nope. Down in the Valley? Kingdoms of Heaven? Nope. 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 Painted Veil? No. Shit. How long ago was this? Le- oh, Leaves of Grass. Never mind. I oh, had- sorry. He was also in the Red Dragon movie. He played Leaves of Christ. He plays his brothers. He's pretty good in Red Dragon. But then again, it's been a long You've time. You've seen since Red Dragon? Seen that. Yeah. Wow, yeah. That's one of those I didn't I was gonna say, but I didn't know if you've seen it. What was that? Two thousand two? Yeah. You know, know what that is, right? Mm-hmm. It's a Hannibal Lecter movie. Uh yeah. Well, it's not Hannibal Lecter. Oh yeah, it is. Hannibal's in retired it. FBI agent with psychological gifts is assigned to help track down the tooth fairy, a mysterious silly killer. Silly is that what he was called. Serial killer. Aiding him is imprisoned. Doctor the Hannibal Lecter is the one that was helping him. Find him. Yeah, okay. Wow. Oh, and that was like still fucking uh, Anthony Hopkins. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so it's like a direct correlation. That's cool. Yeah, before that, there was another adaptation of Red Dragon, but it was called Manhunter for some reason. Okay. Red Dragon is the first book in the series, and then it was like Silence of the Lambs, and then that's when like the popularity of that movie and the character just blew way the hell out of proportion. They He became the main character and like basically fucking good guy for the last movie, just Hannibal. Nice. Which is like, <laughs> I don't know. No, yeah, and I'm not crazy about those movies. I respect them. I think Han- I think he gives it, even though he's like barely in the fucking movies. The books are really good, dude. He's like barely in Silence of the Lambs, which is how it's supposed to be. I know, but he like won an Oscar for that. I know that is pretty ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it happens. I mean, you know, yeah. like Moonlight. You know, uh, I haven't seen that. Oh, he was he it. was literally only in for the first 18 minutes, and he won an Oscar. Hopkins? No, 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 okay. no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Our boy that's playing Blade, dude, Mahash- Mahersha Ali. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was only in the movie for like 18 minutes and won an Oscar. Yeah, and then he won an Oscar like a year ago too. The I dude's mean, trying to get that three P dog. I mean, 18 minutes is like a fair amount of time to like blow people's minds on screen. I know. I mean, it was for a supporting role too, obviously. But it's just crazy. I didn't like it for me watching that. I was like, I didn't think that'd be something the Academy was like. Let's go. <laughs> he killed it. He was awesome. Five of beans. <laughs> uh, so for you, where did the Joker sit, movie and actor wise? Would know, you say that's the best performance you've seen say, all year? Like, it's crazy that like. I honestly think it's like tied with Heath Ledger's performance. I okay. know that they're pretty radically different. I don't think you're wrong with either one because one's the Joker, one's not the Joker, but they're both the same thing. Does that make any sense? How's he not the Joker, dude? Though? I'm sorry, that's not. That, there's no interpretation that we've ever seen of the Joker like this. But he uh, he has many different origins. <laughs> but none. N- what Joaquin did has never been done. Yeah, I, I see that because you know like even Leto's, I could still a see a little bit of like, the Joker in that. Whereas like Heath Ledger and all the other that's just usually, a typical Joker, usual yeah. interpretations of Jokers like he's more much more tactical mm-hmm. and like possibly just faking being crazy. This one is unhinged and just going with it. There mm-hmm. is no rhyme or reason. I don't think he thinks shit out. No, so he's just. Well, I mean, going. obviously he does because well, he, he was he was he rehearsing gets, the whole Murray. That's thing, true. That's true. Even though that's he true. obviously had a change of mind what he was going to do because he was just going to blow his own brains out on TV. Yeah. And said he decided to uh, blow Murray's brains all over the side of the wall. Yeah, De Niro got <laughs> pwned. He didn't kill anybody else in the studio, though, which kind of surprised me. See, I, I mean, it's just he's he's just uh, what's the term I'm looking for? Whatever his his, his craziness. Oh, that's not it. That's just a simple. His word. dancing is excellent. Yep, dancing was excellent. Uh, but I think that's more scary that he doesn't just kill just to kill. Yeah, like he's just he has his. They're albeit very dark and unwarranted, but he had his reasons for killing those people. He's a pretty garbage comedian, but he had a, a few pretty good jokes in the movie. <laughs> yeah, no, he had some pretty like, <laughs> like uh, clock out, punch out. Yeah. That was really funny. That actually made me crack up. And then the one time he accidentally just shot the gun in his house. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Well, that was just a funny scene because he's like dancing, imagining like having a dance <laughs> with a girl. Like, You're a good dancer. I know. <laughs> <laughs> God, he's. <sighs> Don't take this the wrong way, Joaquin Phoenix, but your body was pretty fucking disturbing in this movie. He wanted it to be like he that. He was anorexic. I was say, he, like, he was pretty much anorexic. He was. He lost. A, he lost a good amount of weight, mm-hmm. and he like definitely pushed his ribs out more than what they were. Like you could see him contorting his body when he's standing there. Like he pushed a shoulder blade out, dude. Yeah. It was like popping out his fucking back when that dude came. That was fucking scary. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so you would say it's your best performance you've seen all year? Oh yeah, probably. Nice, nice. I mean, I was excited. Like as soon as I saw the trailers, I was like, you "He's going knew. to fucking annihilate." I this know. Role. <laughs> the worst thing—that's what I was saying. The worst thing that would come from this is an excellent performance. Yeah, exactly. Instead, I got a pretty awesome movie and an excellent performance. Mm-hmm. I already want to like oh, rewatch it very soon. One hundred percent going to watch it within. I'll the probably next week. buy it, and I don't really buy too many movies. Wow. Yeah. No. Just so we have clarification, Stephen does not buy movies. <laughs> like I don't even. What's the last movie you bought? Uh, the last time I remember, Im- oh, uh, Shape of Water. Oh, nice. Which is exactly nice. what I is exactly what happened when I watched Cabin in the Woods, where I was like, I love that movie so much, I went out and bought it the next day. Nice, nice. That's a great movie. I know a lot of people were like, don't Blow. really care for Cabin in the Woods. I know Jeff, like our ex coworker, yeah, fucking he hated it's awful. it. He thinks it's awful. I don't see why. I don't know. I don't know. It's a fun I mean, movie. I guess that's somewhat. Dude, he said there's other movies that did that kind of thing better. Like um, Tucker and Dale versus Evil, which was an well, excellent yeah, movie. I was about to say Tucker and Dale is a riot. Yeah, but I think uh, yeah, they Tucker and Dale did do a better job of the uh, meta, like horror, making fun of the satire. But Cabin in the Woods was like actually being trying to be scary, but then unfolding to on an itself. Extent, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like one set was real, one set was the viewers. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Tucker and Dale was just for the viewers. Mm-hmm. Like that was just like they're on the outside. Like what the fuck's going on? I was just running from bees and then dude just threw himself into a wood chipper. <laughs> so we have had one doozy of a day. <laughs> we have, officer. We have had one doozy of a day. Di- I just love like when the officer goes to lean on that pole in the house. And they're like, don't, don't. <laughs> Boom! Just gets falls nails, and just nails in the head. Him in the face, and they're like, oh god, they killed. Runs the cop. outside, and the kids, of course, in the cop cars, freaking out because they think they killed the cop. I still just don't think anything can just. The best scene was when that kid just tried to dive at him and kill him, but he just dives into the wood chipper. <laughs> Dude, I, the best scene was they, just a riot. It was after all of that, before the, obviously way before the cops, was the B scene. The them B meeting, scene was pretty Them funny. meeting up, talking about what they've experienced because they couldn't get out what they were saying. <laughs> kid freaking out, throws up in the wood chipper. Because the they think one's it's like, just a cult of people just killing <laughs> themselves on their own. Killing themselves hand. over and over. We had to pause that when we first watched that and laugh so hard at that moment. Because they're just they, they don't understand what the fuck's going on. I really wish I could just wipe that movie from my God, brain and I know. rewatch it. It still has moment. Like I still yeah. watch it. And I'm like that's still funny, but man, that first that viewing first time, is just so great. Because I went in. I don't know if you. I think we both. I went always in. thought that movie was going to be garbage when I saw the cover well, and didn't stuff. Didn't we both think it was an actual horror movie though? I know I did. No, I didn't. I did not know it was a comedy. I figured, yeah, I figured it was kind of like a comedy, but I thought it was going to be stupid. Yep. I was like, okay. Well, I thought see. I thought they were going to be serial killers. Okay. <laughs> Go talk to him. He walks up to him with a scythe, shaking and sweating. <laughs> <laughs> Jar of fucking pickles. Jeez. But go see The Joker. Enjoy it. Bring your children. It's a very family friendly <laughs> movie. Even uh, though we just talked about senseless violence and murder and psychotic people. and It's not like violence like is rampant throughout. It's used no. very effectively. Yes. Uh, yeah, tell my interpretations. Also, like when he first killed those kids, uh, well, I was going to say kids, but now they're grown-ass adults yeah. that knew what the hell they were doing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, about to rape a woman. I hate to say That's that who he just, killed was a person that about to rape a woman. Let's just put well, that out there. They were harassing the shit out of her, at least. Yeah. Uh, they were very garbage people. I hate to say it, but they probably had it coming. <laughs> I would never uh, say death has had it coming, but I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I thought that that was a hallucination at first, too, until they was just like rampant on the news and stuff. <laughs> until everyone's talking about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was weird, though. Like, as soon as he's done doing that and he runs away and goes in that little bathroom, he just starts dancing. A butterfly come breaking out of its cocoon. <laughs> yeah, I get that. I guess that was the birth of him. He also says that he thought he would feel bad, but he didn't. He felt happy. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Uh, that you love me? Sure. Aww. <laughs> I had another point, but I forgot. Wow. Yeah, I am. Way to go, Steve. That would have been a pretty fun I'm, moment, I'm dude. I'm prepared. Yeah, you came prepared, <laughs> man. Jesus. Man, well, good comics this week. Great movie this week. I'm so excited. This was this was a good podcast. It was nice having you here, Steve. Thank you. No problem, man. You know, we, we shit on you sometimes, man, but we love you. You know what I mean? You know, you know what I'm saying? Is there uh, anything you'd like to say, sir, to our wonderful viewers? Is there anything you want to give a shout-out to Kyrie? She's listening right now. Please go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you heard it here, folks. Please go to sleep. 
I'm signing off. Josh Van Kroof. Y'all don't want to hear me. You just want to dance. <laughs>